So in this video, I just want to address a couple questions I got from the previous video, which was common datum features. The first question was, hey, what about continuous feature symbol? Why can't I use that instead of doing all that complication with the datums A and B at the same time? Well, the answer is, yeah, of course, you can do it. Uh, so in this situation, we've got these two diameters, one and two. We're going to call it out as continuous feature and identify that as datum A. Now, this is different from saying two times diameter whatever without continuous feature. With continuous feature, right, you're saying, hey, that's one feature. Rule number one applies all along the length, so it controls the coaxiality of those two diameters. Without continuous feature here, there is no control of the coaxiality of this little diameter to this little diameter. They could be, you know, anything. Now, I'll disagree, uh, some of you might be typing in the comments now, I'll disagree with the use of continuous feature and discontinuous features. So I, I probably wouldn't put this on a drawing because this diameter is not continuous with this. I think, and I don't have any proof of this, but given the examples, uh, the idea with continuous feature is that if you have something like this, where you've got a cylinder with grooves cut into it, it, it does make a lot of sense to just say, hey, that outside diameter is a continuous feature. Because when you check it, right, however you're going to do it, you're treating it as a cylinder almost like you treat uh, the major diameter of an external thread uh, as a cylinder, right? It's just going to be however you hold it touching those outside portions. Uh, as opposed to saying one, two, three, four times, and then you've got to control the coaxiality of each of those cylinders to each other. Um, this, I've definitely seen it out there. I don't think standard-wise there's any reason you can't do this. Uh, I think it would cause questions, though. Uh, people will, just like I said, hey, those features aren't continuous. How can they be a continuous feature? Uh, but that's what it does. You know, it, it basically gives you rule number one control over more than one feature, even if they're not connected to each other. Okay. Next up, right, say we didn't want to do datums A and B. We just want one. We can say two times whatever this diameter is, so we're applied here and on this side, and we're going to make that the datum. Now, in this case, you need to control the coaxiality, right? So I'm going to show it with position here, zero MMC. Uh, when I'm teaching position, uh, I always say, hey, the position always has to have uh, datum references, except this one, one time, and this is that one time. We're controlling the position of this cylinder to this cylinder with no datum reference, and it's going to serve as a primary datum for something else. This would only work if those two diameters are the same size. So I could do datum A, B, make it a common datum, or if they're the same size, I could just call them both A. Um, Drawing-wise, you know, uh, revision-wise, it might be easier to go A, B. Maybe there are going to be different diameters at some point. If you do this, it's going to be more difficult to change because then you got to say, oh, geez, I made this diameter slightly larger. Now I've got to apply a datum B feature symbol to it and then change all of this and basically change a lot of your GD and T on the drawing. We could do the same thing with runout. Now, I might be going out on a, on a limb here. Runout can reference itself, right? And so it's in uh, Y14.5 where you've got a common datum and it's referencing one of the datums uh, to itself. It's not an unheard of thing. So following that logic, what we're doing here is saying, hey, this and this are datum A and it's got to have runout basically to itself. Uh, practically speaking, right, if you're going to measure this in a set of v-blocks, you're going to spin it around, you check this, this, and this, kind of all at the same time. Um, I'm not sure if I would put that on a drawing. I think that's going to raise eyebrows, but it is a possibility. Um, and Let me show you what I mean. 
So this is a situation that's shown in uh, ASME Y14.5 where you've got datums A and B and you're basically doing a run out to all of the features. I think the way it's shown has got separate feature control frames, but the same idea. The datum is referencing itself. So I don't see it as a large leap to go here and just, hey, it's referencing itself. It doesn't really make a difference if it's A, B, or just A. It's two features forming one datum axis. Right. So that's it for this video. This is probably shorter than a, a typical video. Just a couple other ways to essentially accomplish the same thing. Continuous feature, you can control the coaxiality with position or run out here. Maybe you could do it with profile. I think you'd really raise eyebrows with profile um, on a cylindrical part, um, even though maybe it would mean the same thing. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe um, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you, know what you think, especially about continuous feature. I, I see it out there more and more. I'm wondering what you guys think about this non-continuous, continuous feature.